transitioning from using full traction control in F124 to no traction control can be one of the toughest challenges in this year's game. Using no traction control can initially feel like your car's driving on ice. However, perseverance and a lot of practice and utilizing our tips from this video on how to drive without traction control can make the, making the transition a little bit easier. In this video, my goal is to help you to switch to not using any traction control in F124. I'm going to briefly touch on how TC works and what assist settings are the fastest, and then I'll show you my top tips for driving without any traction control enabled. But first off, the big question which I get asked all the time, is driving with traction control on slower or faster in F124? Now, if you're a casual player or if you're new to the series, there is no doubt that you'll be faster with traction control enabled. And this is purely because driving a Formula One car with traction control is much easier. However, if you're a seasoned or returning player, or you're hunting for those extra tenths of a second, driving without traction control can allow you to put in potentially faster lap times. You'll have more control over your car and acceleration, which can help you be faster. So first things first, we need to disable traction control and you can do that in the assists menu within the settings. Simply scroll down to the traction control assist and set it to off. Now there is a medium setting as well if you are struggling to make the jump directly from on to off. And this can be helpful, especially if you're racing with a controller. I'd also recommend heading over and checking out our controller settings video as that will make driving with traction control off even easier with a controller as you'll get more control over your throttle inputs. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below and in a card at the top. Now that we have traction control disabled, let's look at my top tips for making driving without it a little bit smoother. Now beware your first laps on track after disabling traction control may be a little bit hairy. You'll probably be putting in slower lap times and you may even have a few chips to the gravel. However, do not worry as that will all change over time. Now tip one, lower your traction control assist gradually. I did just touch on this, but if you're really struggling to drive without traction control, try using the medium traction setting. This is included in F124 as I think the developers probably knew that the transition between full and no traction control is a pretty big jump. The medium traction assist will reduce the impact of the TC system. However, it will keep the safety net that will prevent you from spinning or losing control completely. I wouldn't really recommend using the medium setting for too long, as it can make that final jump to disabling traction control completely a little bit tougher. Only use this as a short term option if you are really struggling. Now my first real tip when it comes to actually driving is to always ensure you're accelerating in a straight line. This really is one of the golden rules of F124 as it makes it so much easier not to brake traction or spin your rear wheels. When you're traveling straight, your rear wheels are pushing you directly forward. If your car is still rotating, your rear wheels will be pushing the rear of your car at a slight angle. And this is what is responsible for your wheels breaking traction and getting an even result in a complete spin. Now, it isn't always possible to wait until your car is in a straight line before you start accelerating. So in these situations, try to utilize the entire track width to straighten your car as much as possible. This can mean opening up your steering so you position your car over an exit curb or taking a slightly different line through a corner to allow for that straighter exit. And if you have no choice but to start accelerating while you're still turning, you can then utilize my next tip. And that is to modulate your throttle pressure. When accelerating from almost any corner, you should always look to modulate your throttle pressure. By that, I mean you gradually start accelerating rather than just hammering the throttle pedal instantly. Gradually increasing your throttle input will result in a slower but more controllable power increase. This is very useful when you start accelerating earlier in the corner or if you're accelerating from slow speeds. Your wheels will most likely spin when you accelerate hard in low traction scenarios. And these include slow speeds such as turn 10 at Canada, accelerating in wet weather, accelerating on a curb, or like I mentioned just now, accelerating while your car isn't straight. You can see how much throttle you're applying using the on-screen HUD. The green bar down the bottom will increase as you apply more throttle. Keeping an eye on this bar while practicing at a track like Canada or Austria or Singapore where you'll constantly be accelerating from slow speeds is a great way of seeing how well you're modulating your throttle input. Tip number four, I'd recommend you utilizing short shifting. 
you may find that you can still spin your rear wheels at slow speeds, even when you do modulate your throttle pressure pretty well. But this can be kind of averted by utilizing a different shifting technique. Short shifting is the term given to changing gear earlier than you normally would. This technique will lower the overall engine RPM, which does dull the power that your rear wheels receive. By shifting early, your wheels aren't being sent quite as much power, meaning they're less likely to break traction. It may seem a little bit counterintuitive to send less power to your rear wheels intentionally. However, you'll lose much more time managing wheel spin than you would from a slight decrease in engine power. Short shifting should be only really used at very slow corners where wheel spin is most likely, but it can also be used at almost every corner if you're racing in wet weather. Now my final tip on driving without traction control in F124 is to optimize your car setup. Your setup has a huge impact on how your car behaves and performs on track. Adjustments such as more rear downforce, a softer rear suspension and lower differential can all combine to produce a much more stable car that's less likely to wheel spin. Most of these car setup changes must be made before qualifying in a race, however your on throttle differential can be adjusted mid race and I'd really recommend doing so in some situations. Lowering your on throttle differential is one of the biggest changes you can make to actually prevent wheel spin. Lower settings allow the rear wheels to spin more independently of each other which reduces the risk of wheel spin. You can lower the on throttle diff via your MFD as you approach a slow corner. After the acceleration zone you can then manually raise it back up again. Now there are other car setup changes you can make to improve your car's balance and make it easier to drive without traction control. And these include a higher rear wing which will produce more downforce at the rear of the car and this can help the rear tires with traction. Suspension changes such as a softer rear suspension or a slightly stiffer front suspension will help to limit your car's tendency to oversteer. As I mentioned, your on-throttle differential, lowering this down is one of the best ways to limit wheel spin when accelerating from extremely low speeds. Minimizing your rear camber will allow more of your rear tires to be in contact with the track, which will increase your ultimate grip. Finally, lowering your rear tire pressures again will increase your tires contact patch with the track, which will increase your traction. Now I'm going to round up my tips video there and hopefully some of these will help you start racing F124 without traction control a little bit easier. Really don't be disheartened by a few spins the first time you hit track without traction control enabled. Over time you'll become more consistent and a much better overall driver. Let me know in the comments below whether you're using traction control or not and which you prefer. If you found any of the tips in this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing as well because I'll be dropping daily F124 videos, including car setups and other advanced technique videos. But until then guys, enjoy F124 and I will see you on track.